so delighted to be here, both to see the beautiful faces in the crowd and to be in this beautiful space. My name is Zinkle Asamoa. I'm a correspondent with NBC News as well as a fill-in anchor for MSNBC. But today, I have the pleasure of being your master of ceremonies for the first women's forum in the United States. So let's just give that a round of applause. So if you're not familiar, the Women's Forum was created in 2005, and since then, they're widely considered the leading international platform for transforming the power of women's voices into forward-thinking economic and policy initiatives. The Women's Forum meetings are a platform that actually spans all continents, so we're really pleased to have Vital Voices host them in the United States for the very first time. And of course, this event is in partnership with Vital Voices Global Partnership. If you didn't know, you're in their building, and it's pretty beautiful, right? For more than 25 years, Vital Voices has been investing in, connecting, and amplifying the work of women throughout the world. And many of these women have gone on to do some pretty impressive things. Maybe you've heard of the Nobel Peace Prize. Maybe you've heard of Amanda Gorman. Maybe you've heard of some award-winning innovators and pioneering human rights defenders. Many of them got their start right here at Vital Voices, so we're excited to have you be a part today. Today's theme, if you didn't see the sign when you were walking in, is time to connect. Let's say that together, time to connect. <laughs> oh, that sounded a little weak for people who have to connect today. Time to connect. Time to connect. That is the mission of today. So I hope if you're not sitting next to someone, uh, excuse me, if you're sitting next to someone you do not know, I hope you'll connect with them today. But we're also gonna go deeper connecting themes of how women's equity transforms uh, the worlds that we live in. This theme also follows the Women's Forum Germany Time to Commit theme and the Women's Forum Global Meeting Time to Act. So pretty impressive, and of course we're in DC, so what better time to connect than in the networking capital of the world? You are here in person, but we're also joined alongside 10,000 people online, so let's give them a little wave. Hello, thank you for joining. We hope you enjoy the programming. And we have some really powerhouse panelists today. I got to speak with a few of them last night, and I'll, I'll tell you, you're going to be very impressed. They're going to talk about the importance of connection to foster gender equality. And we're going to explore three pillars throughout the day, peace, health, and climate. Peace, health, and climate. As a reminder, though, in order to have a good conversation, we don't want to be interrupted by those dreaded phone rings. So if you don't mind just taking your phone out now and silencing it, we'd appreciate it. Of course, we welcome you, though, to tweet and do all that good stuff to tell people how good the conversation is today. On behalf of the Women's Forum, I am so happy to officially open and begin today's event. And I'm now pleased to welcome to the stage Elise Nelson. She's the president and CEO of Vital Voices Global Partners partnership, and Diane von Furstenberg. She's the founder and chairwoman of, you've probably heard of it, DVF, yes, we love them, as well as Anne Gabrielle Hale, excuse me, Hale Bronner. She's president of the Women's Forum for the Economy and Society, and for they're all going to welcome us for the official opening of this event. Let's give them a round of applause. I'm just going to say two words because I happen to be the godmother of this beautiful building. So I so I wanted to welcome I wanted to welcome the Women's Forum and uh, it and the Women's Forum and Vital Voices. I am on the board of Vital Voices. I have been on the board for almost 20 years. It's an organization that I really love and respect and admire. And Women Forum is also an organization that I respect, admire, and love. So I just want to welcome, and that's it. Well, thank you, Diane, um, and thank you for believing in creating the first ever global embassy for women leaders, which is where you are, um, and we're so thrilled to have you, and quite frankly, we are so thrilled to partner. We love the theme of connecting. It's what we at Vital Voices have been about for the last 25 years, connecting women leaders around the globe, because we know when we connect, we are stronger, we are louder, we are bolder and we are more effective in making change. 
We know that women are bringing solutions to our world's greatest challenges, and that was precisely what we envisioned would happen in this space, in this building. It would be the place that women and our allies, we've got one ally coming today. <laughs> we are thrilled <laughs> with the former Attorney General, Eric Holder, being here today. Um, yes. Um, but that's what we wanted to have happen in this space, that women would come together and connect across all the things that may divide us. And that's certainly what we're going to be doing today. I think all of us know that, uh, you know, whether it's COVID, climate, um, you know, the economy right now, uh, crises around the world, and our first panel is going to be around some of those crises, women are disproportionately impacted. We also know that women only get 2% of venture capital. We get about 2% of th philanthropic investments go to women and girls. So I would argue what we need is not just to connect, but we need radical collaboration. We need to support each other in our ventures. We need to amplify each other's voices. And I hope as we go forth into this day, we think about who are the people who we hear, who we meet, who we can amplify, who we can support, who we can radically collaborate with. Because that is, in my opinion, our secret sauce as women. It's the thing that we, I think, want to do naturally. So let's do that today and welcome again. And, and Gabrielle, I'm so thrilled to welcome you here to our global headquarters. Please join me. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, all of you, for being here today. I'm very, very glad to open this first ever Women's Forum in the USA today with a partnership of Vital Voices and especially alongside the abiding support of Diane and Alice. Thank you so much. You know that the ties between the Women's Forum and Vital Voices date back years from now. It's actually 2008 when the play Seven was performed in Deauville, thanks to Diane, and 2009 when Alice was selected as a Women's Forum Rising Talent. We had a very good choice with her. <laughs> and since then, we've learned to know each other, we've learned to respect one another, we've learned to support each other and to work together. And actually, these relationships illustrates exactly what we are trying to imagine and to promote on a bigger scale, a more collaborative and sustainable world, a community of women and men, and I'm glad to see some of them here today. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Committed to build a better world. Um, we were saying it a bit earlier, the Women's Forum was created in 2005, it was acquired by a publicist group in 2009, and I want to welcome some of my publicist colleagues in the room. I'm very glad to see you here today. Thank you. And since 2009, we have organized events in many countries in the world, in Dubai, in Canada, in France, in Italy, in Myanmar, in Mexico, and guess what? Never in the US. And 20% of our global community is coming from the US. So actually, it feels like being home here, and uh, we feel extremely good about this event. You know that the Women's Forum is dedicated to making the voices of women heard, because we believe that this is the way we create change. We believe that women actually possess a great share of the knowledge, enthusiasm, skills, know-how, and passion that is needed to solve the urgent problems of this world. We cannot fix 100% of the issue the humanity is facing with only 50% of the population. Makes no sense. What we see is that gender equality has made some progress in some areas. We have never seen so many women political leaders, even head of state, business leaders, recognized scientists as in 2022. However, sadly, we have also never seen so many steps backwards in terms of women's rights. Millions of girls are being deprived of schooling because of war, climate disasters, 
or religious extremism. We've seen backpedaling in the US on reproductive rights. We see everywhere a pervasive and mounting level of stereotypes and prejudice. At the Women's Forum, we have a barometer. And when we ask G7 people the question, 46% respond that a woman cannot have it all, that she has to sacrifice her career if she wants to be a good mother. And in the US, the figure is 48%. We have lots of work to do. And all of this come in addition to growing nationalism, civil tensions, the uncontrolled and unsustainable exploitation of our natural environment, and serious geopolitical divisions cropping up everywhere. So this is where we are. At the Women's Forum, we've spent the last year working on a time to act, call to action on climate, health, and peace. We believe that the realities of our post-COVID-19 world require new models, new approaches to address this economic and policy need that we have. We need a fresh strategy. And I think there is a need for all of us individually to make a personal commitment if we expect genuine change. Some of us have already done so, so bravo. You could ask yourself, can I alone change the world? Can you change the world? I would answer, it is better to light a single candle in the dark than to blame the darkness. It is worth trying. It is worth daring. And if not now, when? And if not us, who? So here we are in the US with vital voices, with all of you in this room, because it is time to act and it is time to connect. We've decided after what we did in 2022 on climate, peace and health, to focus in 2023 on education. Education will be our candle in the dark for 2023. As we go through today's program and pose our key 2022 themes to usher in education as our new Women's Forum 2023 call to action, allow me to wish you a really, really great day. I hope you will live tonight with new friends, renewed energy and inspiration from our amazing cast of experts I hope we all discover the willingness and resolution to engage even more confidently and fearlessly to raise women's voices and create change. Thank you. It's better to light a candle in the dark than blame the darkness. Thank you all for your smart and powerful words, Elise, Diane, and Anne Gabrielle. Now, I'd like to welcome to the stage Shafika Kapalwak. She's the director of the Masar War Foundation and Wesley College and poetess. She's going to open us for a special piece on peace and conflict. Welcome. <laughs> 